Coming up on today's episode, our top tips for unscrewing your HDTV's picture, The Breakfast Club on Blu-ray. It's 25 years old, which means I'm not going to talk about how old I am. Free IMAX, I'm fixed for World Cup soccer withdrawal, and of course the Blu-ray releases for the week of August 3rd, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Netflix. Go to netflix.com slash hdnation for your free trial membership. Gamefly. Check out gamefly.com slash hdnation for a free trial account. And squarespace.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air. If it's in HD, we like it. Yeah. Even on thumb drives. You're a big fan of the Disney classics, right? Snow White. I've seen your room. <sighs> Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm more of a Warner Brothers guy than the Disney guy. Anyhow, Gadget HD said sneak released clips of the restored version of Alice in Wonderland posted up on the high-def disc news site were, quote, spectacular. And actually, judging from the stills I've seen taken from that sample, I would agree. Beautiful restoration, at least on Alice in Wonderland. That makes me so happy. Quality restorations, where it's at. I just, yum, yum. <laughs> in other news, Samsung's Galaxy S. Oh, I want to look at that so badly. And Dell's new Maxi phone. Maxi phone? you got to be kidding me. It's like a five-inch screen, dude. Is it? Have you seen it? That's a terrible name. No, no, no. It's <laughs> the, the streak? Maxi phone was, was me. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, what the? Who it's named a it big Maxi phone? phone. It's, it's got a, no, the, the name that is. That sounds like a feminine product Del or something. Streak. <laughs> Maxi phone was, in any case, <laughs> terrible. The Streak and the Galaxy S joined the ranks of smartphones that offer HDMI oh, yeah. output. The Galaxy S actually uses a micro USB to HDMI connection, which is a little strange to look at, but apparently it works. The Streak uses a dock, basically a docking device to bring HDMI to your HDTV. Both are talking about 720p playback, which would be perfect for iTunes HD content. Are you can be able to get iTunes content on I'm Instagram? mocking. Yeah. Cuz iTunes and HD, it's 720p. <laughs> By the way, for anybody from Apple's watching, we need to talk about children's cartoons and the compression. The compression has to stop people. Do Sorry. it yourself. <laughs> But I get the source. Also in the news, Netflix subscribers on the PlayStation 3 are getting a treat, the ability to search titles. It should automatically update on your PS3 the next time you fire up your favorite online video rental platform, Netflix, which for those of you not on the PS3 means your friends with PS3s will no longer have to go to a computer to add stuff to the queue on their PS3. So very kind of cool. PS3 is now ahead of the Xbox 360 in terms of actually being able to search on the device without wandering to a computer, but the PS3 still requires you to use a disc. True, to for the time being. Netflix. Yep. For and apparently the Xbox okay. platform also offers a few extra sorting functions for different categories of movies as well. So, hey, it's a good time to be watching Netflix at home. <laughs> Hey, we know you love those glorious screen-filling IMAX movies, so if you're looking for a new 3D Blu-ray player, HDTV, or projector, keep an eye out for bundles that include new Blu-ray 3D versions of IMAX, Under the Sea 3D, Space Station 3D, and IMAX Deep Sea 3D. Go Warner Brothers. Wow. Yeah. That should be pretty cool. Now, if you're suffering from World Cup withdrawal... I know you are. A little bit. I can I, see the tracks. The Boo Boo Zellas. <laughs> Uh, the noise is still in my head, but I don't actually hear them anymore. I don't that's, understand. That's called tinnitus. Is it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> DirecTV says that it will have the Fox Soccer Channel in HD before the English Premier League season begins mid-August. Nice. Dude, did you give up your DirecTV when you moved? Yeah, we are actually experimenting. We, we have given up the, the cable subscription. No satellite, no cable. Holy cow, and off the grid? Off the grid. <laughs> we are officially off the grid. You must yeah. have internet access. I have internet access, okay. which is how we're using the Broku and the Apple TV. It's actually really ticking me off because I'm missing Entourage and True Blood right now. So. Oh. Yeah, we'll see how long this lasts. Is there a lot of nudity in True Blood? <laughs> no comment. Okay. From the Mia Culpa <laughs> department last week, we talked about the differences between the old BSG box set that had the Cylon doll and the new BSG box set that doesn't come with a Cylon doll. Turns out there's one other difference uh, other than the box. The new one includes the plan. Yeah. Instead of the Cylon doll. I want to thank Brian from up in Canada who sorted that one out for me. Do you, do you, do you got a minute for a quick question? Uh, for you. 
Of course. <laughs> Chris okay. writes in, I just picked up a Yamaha receiver to replace an aging receiver and add HDMI support to my system. The receiver offers sound field programs, oh, God. movie and music, cinema DSP programs with names like Standard, Adventure, and Chamber. Wow. Are all these just marketing hype or are they something I should be using? Thanks, Chris in North Carolina. Um, I'm not sure who hates these. Okay. So here's the thing, right? One for your life. You're, yeah, <laughs> don't don't turn them on, right? Because here you are, you're sitting in the marketing department at Mega Electronics Corp, and you're thinking, I need to sell more receivers than that guy, right? So you go like, hey, we can take acoustic maps of Radio City Music Hall and synthesize the actual sound effects of Radio City Music Hall <laughs> into your room. So your room will actually sound like a giant 3,500 seat theater that was designed in the 30s. And you know what? Oh, it doesn't wrong. work, man. It's terrible. Well, it, it, look, don't get me wrong. If, if you have the effects and you like them, Go for it. They just, to me, they screw up the original intended, intentions of the recording There engineer. is no reason to be using any of those yeah. features. Honestly, they should have made those type of sound, field, settings, they should be so hard to access as to be almost <laughs> unavailable. I mean, you really just want to stick to those basics, man. Your LPCM, your right. Dolby Digital, your DTS, or, or HD versions of the said things I just mentioned, but yeah. stay away from things that make your, your sound system sound like it's put in the bathroom with tiled walls and everything. No. It's wrong. It's yeah, wrong. if it works for you, by all means, enjoy it. I gotta say, for me, like the perfect like stereo audio setup is like a volume, a source of volume control and a power amplifier. And they always put a button on the front of the AVR where one accidentally brushing that button will enable one of those stupid mm -hmm. sound fields too. So. Uh, it, it's so backward in terms of yeah. how those things are presented. It, sh it should be the opposite. They should be well hidden, almost almost unable to find them on any given product. Yeah, because I've, nev be I've never turned one of those on and thought, wow, <laughs> I feel like I'm in a theater. It's always like, designed what for, happened? Yeah. What went wrong? Are my speakers damaged? No? Okay. <laughs> I feel dirty. <laughs> Reset the AVR. Coming up next, Breakfast Club. Right now, though, we got to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Gamefly.com, people. That's the largest online video game rental service out there. We're talking 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. You can get your game on for as little as $15.95 a month. And if you're a Gamefly member, you get one to four games at a time. You get to keep it for as long as you like. Play games until your eyeballs fall out of your face. No late fees, no due dates. Shipping is always free. You don't have to leave the house anymore to get games. That and a grocery delivery service, you are set. When you're done playing a game, you just send it back. Gamefly gives you the next available game on your list. You like the game, click keep it on the Gamefly website. You get the game and the manuals and the case, free of charge, not the game, get the game at a discounted price. Everything else, Gamefly sends you for free. And if you're looking for a bargain and you're an HD Nation fan, you can score a two week free trial if you go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Some restrictions do apply, of course. Please see the site for details and please support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. A brain, an athlete, a basket case, a princess, and a criminal. Locked in a library for most of this movie. Yes, there were squeals of delight in my house when I whipped out my screener of the Breakfast Club Blu-ray, followed by me discovering my wife had seen the movie so many times on cable, she knew most of the lines by heart, which she'd quietly whisper along with the movie, which was kind of adorable and kind of typical for a John Hughes movie. 16 Candles, The Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink. While well, these movies are thoroughly grounded in the 80s, Check the soundtrack albums if you don't believe me. They're pretty timeless content-wise if you're sort of a smart, outsider-y kind of person trying to fit in doing the high school thing. And they also prove teen movies didn't have to suck. So, how's the Blu-ray look of The Breakfast Club? Solid. Here's the thing, though. This wasn't a high-budget feature. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, another huge joint, shot on better film, probably shot with better cameras, and its Blu-ray looks spectacular. For the most part, beyond some telecine wobble, and I want to thank Blu-ray.com for giving a name to what I saw in the credits. It's kind of a yeah, it's, it's a, a beat little pattern, a wobble. It is. If you will. I, actually, that's it's why a good it's way to put it. Telecine wobble. Duh. Look up telecine. Anyhow, the, the transfer looks pretty solid. The colors are good. The blacks are good. There's no ugly digital noise reduction turning everybody into plastic hand puppets in the 5.1 soundtrack, while kind of soft in the surround effects. Uh, big shock, it's a bunch of kids talking in a room, not Iron Man 2, right? It takes pretty good care of the dialogue. The extras are definitely worth watching if you're a fan of the movie, and they look solid on my 1080p screen at home. Thumbs up, especially if you grew up on this one. That movie's kind of near and dear to my heart. Uh, back in high school, my, one of my teachers actually showed that to us unedited in, in really? class and got in a whole bunch of trouble for it because apparently it has like 
one four-letter word begins with an F, and uh, <laughs> it's very, very minimal compared to what they deal with today. Right. But from that point forward, it was just like, wow, okay, this is pretty cool, and, and it's, it's a good, good movie. Film. Yeah, no, I, I, I love John Hughes' work. I, I will never watch Home Alone again, which he wrote the script for. <laughs> I saw it in the theater, I think. But, All right, but Breakfast Club's good. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Other releases for the week of August third, twenty ten, include. Kick ass. It's Roger's favorite movie of the year, and he says if you missed it in the theaters, skip renting it, just go out and buy the Blu ray. Actually, you should probably buy the Blu ray even if you did catch it in the theater. It's a three disc set a Blu ray, a DVD, and a digital copy, and the Blu ray is packed full of extras. You get about a 20 minute featurette about the comic book's origins of the film and an extensive art gallery. And exclusive to the Blu-ray release is a four-part extra in which you can play individually or all at once. It totals nearly two hours altogether and covers all aspects of how the film came together. From the comic book and quick turnaround to the film adaptation, a look at the cast and the crew as they film, visual effects, sound design, visiting Comic-Con, finding a distributor, and much more. Also released this week, California. If you want to see Brad Pitt play an evil bastard, this is the film for you. Also starring Juliette Lewis and David Duchovny, this film tells the story of two couples who travel across the country to get to California, stopping at famous murder sites along the way as research for Duchovny's book about serial killers. But it turns out they don't have to go far to get up and close with the mind of a killer. This release includes a DVD as well as both the theatrical and unrated versions. This flick is a must-see to get a glimpse of a Brad Pitt as you've never seen him before. Other releases include After Dot Life, Blood Done, Sign My Name, Blood Simple, Bull Durham, 2000's Charlie's Angels, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, 1972's Elvis on Tour, Elvis Collection, Escape from New York, The Ghost Rider, Hero Season 4, Humanoids from the Deep, James and the Giant Peach, 2010's Open House, Piranha, A Prophet, Road to Perdition, 2006's Splinter, To Save a Life, and Woodstock, Three Days of Peace and Music, 40th Anniversary Edition. It's time to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. This week, I'm preparing myself for the experience of David Lynch's 1986 twisted murder mystery, Blue Velvet. The late great Dennis Hopper's compelling depiction of a helium-huffing kidnapper is backed up by solid performances from Isabel Rossellini and Kyle MacLachlan. Good times. For $8.99, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to your home. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding base of devices that can stream movies and TV episodes from Netflix right to members' TVs are the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Wii. Find movies you love easily. You can browse, search, or see Netflix's recommendations for you. They even have a special back-of-box feature that lets you get the details of any movie instantly. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so that they know we sent you. We've got a steady stream of email always coming in requesting we demonstrate the various HDTV settings that affect picture quality. I think this would be a good time for, for calibrating your display 101. Yeah, that yeah. would be a good one. I, we should definitely start with some basics first. Okay. And I'd say number one is you probably don't know the current condition of the TV in terms of has somebody else messed with it? Have they changed specific settings? So it's always a good idea just to reset that thing. And some TVs provide a handy shortcut to reset everything. Yes. For example, newer Sony TVs can be fully reset by holding the up arrow on the remote and pushing the power on button on the TV itself. Cool. It just will suddenly display reset, and then it goes back to just like it was when you took it out of the box. Now, other TVs like Samsung have a more hidden way of doing that, but at the same point, just about every TV has a menu setting in the display settings that says reset everything. So that's what we're looking for. And since we are using a Blu-ray disc player as the source device for <laughs> our video, it's a good idea to make sure that it is also reset to its default settings, and we can always go back and tweak it if mm -hmm. needed. So. 
with that in mind. So start basically with the stock settings. Yeah. Get back to how it was right when you took it out of the box, just to ensure that there isn't something that's been changed that you were just unaware of that would <laughs> later on just ruin everything you just did and you have to start all over. Right. Why not just start with the start at the beginning? That's always a good place to be. And there are lots of quality HD test pattern discs out there that are available for purchase. We've shown the Spears and Munsell benchmark disc as well as Digital Video Essentials HD Basics. Both are available on Blu-ray. You can buy those online for a pretty low price if you want. A good free alternative is the AVS HD 709 calibration disc. That's available for download on the SpectraCal.com website with more info and links provided on the related AV Science forum posting. And that's that's what's running right here. That's what we actually have running. This is a file you can download. It's available in a couple different formats. Mm -hmm. We're using one called AVC HD. That's a common HD camcorder format. And you burn that to a regular DVD and it will play in most players. They actually have a chart on the AV forum where you can look through and see, oh, this is my player. This is the version I should probably use. We're using that Panasonic uh, was it the 300 Blu-ray player that we showed off last week? I know it supports AVC HD, so we're using that disc with this player, and I think we're pretty good to go. I would then start by looking at the TV's picture settings. Uh, every TV out there offers, or most of the new TVs that you'll find today, offer uh, a picture preset that's labeled something like custom or user. Basically, right. a picture preset that allows you to play with all the settings. It's usually like movies, television, sports. Those are some of the presets that are there, but we're looking for that one that says either custom or the one that says, like, user. Those which, are usually the two most common names I see. We should point out, as much as we despise strange presets that are designed to emulate theaters in in the audio side of things, the presets on most HDTVs actually are a quick and dirty, a fast, reasonably good way to get your picture looking good. If totally. You have, if you have time to calibrate, like, hit movie, hit sports, whatever you're doing, at least eyeball it. That totally. Be really I find when we way. reset the TV, that's generally a good setting for a bright room. Uh, something like cinema or movie mode right. would be good for a darker room setting for a little more detail and picture quality. But cool. that's a, just a quick and dirty trick right there. Now, we're going to dive right into the picture settings on the TV itself. And the first thing you need to look at and locate is something called picture size. And we'll get into something else called color temperature. <laughs> picture size is really just how much the picture on the screen is being scaled to fit the screen itself. Overscan? And Overscan is another word for that, and we just want to make sure it is turned off. We're using a, a device that puts out a 1080p signal right. to a 1080p TV. There is no reason for it to be stretching that picture beyond the active portion of the screen. So we just want to make sure that's turned off. It's usually labeled something different on different TVs. Mm -hmm. Sony has it under a picture size setting. Samsung actually places it under their tool menu as they actually have a specific picture size function right up here in the corner. I could dig into the main menus, but they have it right here, and it's quick and easy. And this, ta-da, is an example of an over-resolution slash resolution, or over-scan slash resolution patterns and things like that. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Because of kind of a hangover from the old SD tube television broadcast days, they used to basically, the televisions would actually put the screen far beyond the edge of the tube or what was cable. And, and, in HDTVs, because there's a one-to-one -one pixel mapping, you actually can find televisions that are set where five, just a huge chunk of the information coming from your Blu-ray player or your satellite or your cable TV is wasted because totally. it's shoved off the edges for no it's reason. It's also really common in rear projection TVs mm -hmm. because the edges might not be perfectly straight, so right. they'd rather just shine that projector a little bit bigger, hide those edges, and keep, thing, keep that, that unwanted artifact out of sight. Here on flat panel televisions like LCDs and plasmas, completely unnecessary, so Turn that stuff off. <laughs> if you notice the border, it's showing approximately about a 5% overscan right now, about 2.5% on each side. I'm just going to go in here and switch from the what should be, you think, 16 by 9. Oh, it should be showing 16 by 9. Samsung labels there is something called just scan. And when mm. I do that, suddenly, boom, I just regained 5% of the picture, the That's video picture. picture. So the right. source device now is mapped one-to-one -one with the TV. And if I get rid of that, in the corner, they actually have these single, double, triple pixel patterns that if they look perfect, then you know you've got one-to-one -one mapping. If you're seeing full detail in the, in the finest of the line patterns here, you're going to be good to go. And you know you've got it right. That and you can see all the borders around the edge. Cool. Done. We're getting the full picture, full 1080p onto a 1080p screen mapped one-to-one -one just right. So once you've got it set, so you're actually just seeing every pixel from your content on your screen, it's time to start playing around with colors, or more accurately, color temperature, which you call the color of gray. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it might seem unintuitive, but video as we deliver it from disks is actually compressed in such a way where color is way more compressed, and the high resolution part's actually in black and white. And it's very important that that black and white portion of the signal be delivered 
you know, there's a standard for what color of white is to be used for reproducing that picture. It, 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 technically, it's called something D65 or 6500 mm -hmm. Kelvin. What we're trying to do is get the TV to be as close to that as possible. A couple of tricks, uh, well, the rules of thumb really are you don't want white to be too blue, and you don't want it to be overly reddish either. You want it to be fairly neutral. Now, with a, a stepped grayscale pattern like we have up here, you can kind of get an overview of how, 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 what the color of gray kind of is. This, to me, looks a little bit bluish. Mm -hmm. compared to if instead of perhaps a little more red and just by adjusting the color temperature setting on the TV which will probably require me to go into the picture menu itself so I'm just going <laughs> to dive into the picture menu real quick in terms of everyone naming something a little bit different uh, color temperature setting on this particular TV is actually called color tone it's at warm too which is I think the warmest it'll go that means it's a little more reddish warm one Whoa. and if I go any cooler than that well you can actually see it if I get rid of it but turning it all the way up that looks really blue to me I definitely want it the other, the other way around, so I'm going to go back and change that back to it was already at warm too. That looks like a good place to be, so I'm just going to leave it there. Now, having that warm picture, uh, warm picture color, or color temperature and the picture size fixed, I'd also go through and make sure that things like video noise reduction are disabled as well. With Blu-ray movies, you really don't need to be adding any noise reduction to the picture. It's a clean source. For most sources you're going to be looking at, you really don't need to be adding noise reduction to anything because there is a possibility that you could lose detail. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, we kind of have a solid start to everything. Uh, we've got our picture map properly. We've got the color temperature where we want it. Next week, we'll tackle the two most important and misunderstood picture settings, brightness and contrast. Coming up, we got a couple viewer questions from you. Right now, though, we want to thank Squarespace. Squarespace, it's a publishing system. It's, a, it's like a publishing tool, it's a hosting system. It's for anybody that wants a blog, a portfolio, or any kind of website. The blog tools are pretty cool. They allow iPhone updating on the go, hassle-free importing of sites from other environments. So if you want to move to Squarespace from somewhere else, they make it quick and clean. They offer really solid and robust stats, and quite a bit more. Matter of fact, the coolest thing, the tool makes it super easy for anybody to build and maintain a site that well could be kind of a nightmare on other platforms, like if you forget to update it or add a security patch, Squarespace has you covered. And if you can code unlike me, Squarespace lets you get under the hood, dive into the code, and really, really customize things. Tens of thousands of people all across the internet have been using Squarespace for years, and their already great service is getting better by the day. On July 14th, Squarespace announced a huge round of capital investment that allows them to expand at an even faster rate. This is a good thing. We want to congratulate Squarespace, and I gotta say, we're excited to be working with these people. Do yourself a favor, use the code HDNATION for 10% off the lifetime of your order. Check it out at squarespace.com, people. All right, Drew emailed us asking, I'm getting a 50-inch 720p Samsung Plasma in your unboxing of the new 3D Plasma. Made me wonder about the break-in for the TV. Manufacturers now state that break-in is unnecessary, but I've read that manufacturers may be saying that to help plasma sales. Should I believe them? If not, would these break-in DVDs help? Since there are so many guides online, all with different opinions, I figured I'd get advice from the experts. Drew in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Yeah. I'm of the opinion that break-in video discs are unnecessary nowadays for plasma televisions. Originally, people would use these discs because the phosphors on the panel that create the light you see, instead of like LCDs that have lights that shine through layers of material, plasmas actually just emit light right. because they're glowing. Uh, in order, the, when, the pla when the phosphors are brand new, uh, the, the fear was is that by showing anything for even short periods of time, they're so fresh and active that it's possible to unevenly wear them quite easy, and that creates that, that persistent image, or a burn-in that some people call it. So they is basically to break the little bits of, of phosphor in with a pattern that, what was it like the, was it the cycling colors color usually, noise, or, or, or okay. hopefully moving patterns as well. I haven't looked at them in a while, but nowadays, the plasma panels themselves go to good lengths to protect themselves. Namely, the, the most popular means of providing this protection for, for fo uneven phosphor wear is something called pixel orbiting. The picture, as it's displayed on the screen, is slightly moved over a very long, usually over minutes of time. <laughs> and it, so that even if it were a static image, right. it would be shifted slightly over those periods of time so that no one particular pixel is being overdriven, say, more than another. Cool. Also, plasma TVs by nature are dynamic display devices. Mm -hmm. The voltage to each pixel decreases as the overall video picture level increases. To put that simply, if I displayed a full screen of pure 100% white on a plasma screen, 
and then I shrunk that window down to a small square of white. Mm -hmm. When it's full screen white, it would actually dim quite a bit. Huh. And when I scale that down to a small little square, it would actually brighten up dramatically. You're saying black is brighter than white, or white is perceived as brighter as it becomes less of the screen? The average picture level, the overall brightness of that scene, say, the brighter mm -hmm. it is, the, the panel will not let it get above a certain level so it Got doesn't it. send too much electricity. And in, in my opinion, that actually creates for it creates a more eye-friendly viewing experience right. because even even the it's most not like the LED when it goes to the scene and the gun blast goes off and all of a sudden your eyeballs are fried and you're tan from like two seconds of video on your exactly, LED panel. Exactly. Exactly. Keeps yeah. your eye. It keeps that, that that good nature of a well a well dark adjusted eye right. going just the way it should be. So uh, what would you recommend? Tip number one, don't overdrive the display in the first 100 hours, say, of use. No vivid modes. That, that's really what I'm trying to get you. If you stick to that out-of-the-box mode, it's, mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. And also, try to stick with full-screen video sources. It, it can be tough to avoid a letterbox movie. I mean, I like letterboxing. I really, really do. But on a brand new display, I might be tempted just to say, you know what, stretch it out a little bit. <laughs> just this once. Just, just this just once. Stretch go ahead it out and to full just, screen. For that first 100 hours, maybe. <laughs> this is if I were really paranoid about it. For, I, I doubt I'd even do that. It's starting to sound like a break-in period to me. For the, the first 100 hours, period, use a full screen. I don't use vivid mode. I wouldn't sit there, though, and run a disc just to wear the screen in a little bit to get through that mode. I'd just do it using the content you're already looking at. Also, cycle the power and run the screen wipe function that's on a plasma TV if you do notice an afterimage that yeah. doesn't go away on its own. That, that usually will get rid of most of them. Sometimes it's just a, a residual electrical charge that's holding whatever the last thing was being right. displayed, it still kind of got the pixels a little stuck, and by either cycling the power or just running that screen white mode, that'll take care of it. Plasmas are not what they used to be. They are a lot, lot better. And they're not dead yet, people. Oh, no. Because some not people are like, plasma's time. dead! Like, Viewing angle king until we get giant <laughs> OLED displays. That and, uh, I don't know, eye-friendly in my opinion. Finally, we got a question from Dennis who writes, I've been calibrating my TVs with digital video essentials and THX glasses. I have a Sony LCD, and I find that the default cinema mode is spot on. Told you. But since that's not enough for me, I got the Datacolor Spider 3 TV, used it, and found all of my factory cinema mode settings were slightly off. Do you recommend these types of devices, or should I trust my eyes with the THX glasses? Signed, Dennis, in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, the, or Missouri. The spider, the, basically the on-screen device is not looking through the glasses, so how could the on-screen device be as accurate as your eyeballs looking through the glasses? It can't. It's a different I viewing experience. I believe that product includes a DVD that you right. play, and it displays certain patterns, and then you use that, what it is essentially a colorimeter, the spider product. It's a right. puck, a USB-powered puck you put on the TV, and it measures what's coming off of there, and it tells you what adjustments to make for all your basic settings. But isn't he talking about adjusting your, he was saying he was adjusting the settings. This is, by the way, code for 3D glasses. Wasn't he, he was adjusting? using the blue filter glasses with oh. with the digital video essentials disc, which is something we'll get into in a couple weeks, actually. To show you guys I was just it. assuming it was 3D glasses. Oh, no, no. This is all 2D, just video calibration, doing all the basic settings. Mm -hmm. And he's wondering, basically, should I, should I trust this puck device or my own eyes with the blue filters? One thing about blue filters I have found mm -hmm. is that they're all slightly different. Yeah. And so one piece of blue plastic that you look through to do the color and tint settings in particular, uh, it may not be the same as another piece of blue plastic that you look through. It is nice to have a third-party hardware device, but I'd say try both ways. And if you are, you said it was close, and if you really mean like one or two clicks on the remote, I mean, the difference being slight with your adjustments versus what you got with the Spider product, I'd say you did a pretty good job uh, also be aware that products like the Spider might not perform adequately in low luminance levels. Mm -hmm. If you're measuring dark test patterns, I find that the puck devices don't do as well of a job as they would with, say, bright patterns or colors. Right. Uh, the displays like yours do, and all displays really do, gradually change over time. So what were what was looking good in terms of settings when the TV was brand new out of the box might not be the same, mm -hmm. down, uh, say, a year from now or two down the road. Uh, bottom line, tr try it both ways, and then look at some. Video for, uh, video material that you are extremely familiar with. Look at particular skin tones and other colors, and do they look natural to your eyes? Uh, if you got it within one or two clicks of, of a hardware device telling you one way, I think you, I think you did a pretty good job. And I'd I'd really say that um, I don't know. I, I would look at some look at some material you're familiar with and see if it if it if it looks right to you. Are the are the cheeks maybe, not too rosy? Uh, does the skin look natural? Do, does grass look not acid green but normal <laughs> grass green? Right. That kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, do you, I mean, do you trust like a consumer, you know, 
calibration of a hardware calibration device because they're they're I mean like you're used to using like a multi thousand dollar system for testing yeah. the calibration in the set of, t of yeah. HCTVs. I'm leery I'm leery of those type of products, right. especially for doing just basic calibration. I mean, I, honestly, a pair of THX glasses are are literally two dollars on the T. Our, our blue filters in general are cheap. You right. can pick those up. Test patterns like we showed you earlier, those can be had for free. You can do this stuff without spending a couple hundred bucks on a on a puck device, but. So the calibration puck is probably overkill, but you won't yeah. say don't do it. If you like the way it looks after the puck settings, you know, enjoy it. There you go. With your <laughs> concert hall surround <laughs> processing. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to verify with hardware, but you know, blue filters are blue filters, and it's fun to play with. So, But all blue filters are different. They are. Didn't you say that? They different. are. Different. You got to have something, though. Hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think. So send your comments, questions, or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. You can always find us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hdnation. And everything we talk about in the show, we pretty much got links for all of it in the show notes on the page for the show at hdnation.tv. Awesome. Plus, you'll find all of the links to subscribe to the show. So please subscribe and watch. And until next time, thanks for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week. Bye.